how to sew the shop away bag with Amber Makes. It's available in a choice of different designs. Follow me and I'll show you how to make this gorgeous shop away bag that folds up into a neat little pocket. Cutting out. Take the panel from your kit and give it a press and if you have a look at it you will see all the pieces are labelled with the name of the piece printed above each one. You need to cut out the labels and pin them to the top of the right side of each piece so you remember which is which. For the giraffe you can see there are ears and horns and the different panels and projects have different features and you've also got extra charm squares that you can use for your own makes and some images that you can use for applique. So cut them all out and pin the label to the top of each piece. If you're making the giraffe, you'll see that you've got the bag front and the bag back. You've got the pocket front and the pocket back. And you can see that I've pinned the labels to the top of each piece. You've also got the pocket casing front and the pocket casing back. And you've got all the pieces for the ears and all the pieces for the horns. You've got the pieces here that are printed for the handles. And then I've cut out the extra charm squares and the applique makes that you can use for your own projects and a label if you want to label and personalise your bag. You'll also need for the giraffe some cord and a spring toggle for the pocket, a tiny little bit of toy stuffing to put in the ears and also some string if you want to add a tail. And I've used a couple of an eyelet for the tail, but you don't have to use that. That's optional. If you're making the cat, you will also have the similar pieces. You'll have the bag front and the bag back. You'll have the pocket front and the pocket back. The pocket casing front and the pocket casing back. And the handles. You'll have all the pieces for the ears, the inner ears and the outer ears. And here's all the extra charm squares, labels and applique pieces that you can use for your own makes. You'll also need the cord for the pocket and a spring toggle, a length of string, rope or yarn for the tail. If you're making the bee, you will have these pieces. You'll have the bag front and the bag back, the pocket front and pocket back, the pocket casing front and the pocket casing back. You'll have the pieces for the wings and the handle pieces and again extra charm squares, a bag label and some other pieces that you can use for applique if you want to. And you'll need the cord for the pocket and a spring toggle and then a small length of cord to use for the antennae. Adding the features. Follow the instructions for the bag that you're making. If you're making Cleo the cat, follow these instructions. Take the right inner ear and the right outer ear and place them right sides facing. Make sure that you match up the raw edges all the way around. They're exactly the same size and shape, so this is easy to do. And then put a few pins in all the way around, making sure that those raw edges are matching up. Now sew together all the way around but leaving that bottom straight edge unstitched. And then it will look like this. You can see I've trimmed the seam allowance at the top curve just to remove bulk and then turn the ear right sides out. I'm using a stick here. You can use something that's blunt, not pointed, just to push the seams to the edge and then press it. I'm doing this with my fingers, but use your eye to press it so the seams lay right on the edge. Now we're going to create a fold in the ear. You can trim off that bottom point now or you can do that later. So place it with the inner ear right sides up. Now it's up to you how big you make this fold, depending on how folded you want your ear. So I started off by folding, turning it over by half an inch and folding it over. And you can do this if you want to just have a little fold like this. Or I decided I wanted a bigger fold in mine. So in the same way, turn your ear right sides up. 
And to create more detail and have a bigger fold, you can turn it over by one inch instead. So try both ways and see which, what size of fold that you would like. So place the inner ear right sides up and then from the left hand side, so the, the pointy side, if you make a mark one inch in from here, then fold that edge over so that it meets up with that mark, you will see the bottom point sticks out beyond the raw edge. And that's how it's supposed to be. So if you're making a smaller fold, the bottom point will stick out. So you can see the fold here, just tack that into place. And that will hold the fold. Once you've done that, you can then snip off that so that the raw edges are all nice and level. And that's the right ear finished. Make the left ear in exactly the same way by folding over the more pointy edge, the sloping edge over. I'm doing mine by an inch, but you can do it less if you want. And remember, when you fold it over, the bo bottom point will extend beyond the raw edge. Pin it into place and then tack. Now take your pocket front and fold it in half along that top straight edge. This is just to find the centre. You can measure it. I find it easier to fold and put a little crease in and I'm going to mark that. Now mark a half an inch either side of the centre. So you've got three marks. You've got the centre and a mark half an inch either side. Take the right ear and place that right sides down on top so that the left hand side of it marks up, matches up with that first half inch mark. And also make sure the ear extends a quarter of an inch above the top of the raw edge of the pocket front. This just makes it extra secure and stops the ears from being pulled out or coming out as you're using it. Now take the left ear and place that right sides down on top. And again, put the right hand side of it on that mark that's half an inch to the left of the centre mark and make sure it stands quarter of an inch above the top. So now you can see that there is an inch between the ears and that they are placed centrally on the pocket front. Pin it into place and then tack the ears into place within the seam allowance across the top. And now your pocket front will look like this and you can move on to the next stage to make the bag. Geraldine the giraffe, adding the features for the giraffe. Take the right outer ear and the right inner ear and place them right sides facing. Remove the labels before you do this, just because it's easier to turn it right sides out afterwards. But keep them because you can pin them back into place once you've turned it right sides out, if you need to remember. Then pin it together all the way around the edge, making sure the right, the raw edges are matching. Now you need to sew it together down the side all the way around the curved edges but leave that bottom angled edges the straight the bottom edge that's angled leave that unstitched now to help it to turn right sides out and lay flat just snip a little notch out of that corner and then you can put little clips in the seam allowance make sure you don't trim the seam that just helps it to lay flat when it's turned right sides out and clip a little notch out of that corner it just removes the bulk and you'll get a flatter ear now turn the ear right sides out. If you just put your finger in right to the bottom and then push the bottom through to the top, that's just a quicker way of doing it. And then carefully turn it all right sides out. Make sure you've reverse stitched at each end of the seam that you've just stitched and this stops any stitches coming undone whilst you're turning it right sides out. Now use something, I'm using the stick for my turning tool here, but something that's blunt just to push out the seams so they lay right on the edge and then roll them between your fingers so they're on the edge and you can give them a little press at this point so you've got a nice flat ear and then undo those bottom edges. Now fold it in half so that those two angled edges meet up like this. Now we're going to sew along this fold just to make a pleat in the ear. So just pin it together so you can see those two angled edges are matching up. So if you fold your ear following my video here, then that will help. And then just make a mark a half an inch up from the bottom. 
and then using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, sew together but stop at that half inch mark, just like this, and that creates the pleat. Now fold the pleat over to the left hand side, pin it into place. You can now trim the bottom raw edge so it's straight if needs be. It just sometimes ends up and not straight after you've done the pleat and tack together. And then that is the right ear finished. The left ear is made in exactly the same way. The only difference is the pleat goes over, folds over to the right hand side. And you see, I've put the labels back on so I remember which ear is which. Now you need to make the horns. So take the right outer horn and the right inner horn, remove the labels and place them right sides facing. They're exactly the same size and shape, so the raw edges will match up. So adjust them so the raw edges are matching up all the way around and pin together. You'll only need a few pins to do this. It's just to make sure that the curved and the straight edges are all matching. Now sew it together all the way around, but leaving that bottom straight edge unstitched. And then it will look like this. Now to remove the bulk in the seams, cut a little notch out of the corner there. And then for this one, I'm just going to trim the seam allowance in half. So it's about an eighth of an inch wide and that just removes the bulk inside. But take out that little notch in the corner to help that lay flat. Now you need to turn this right sides out. You can do this by hand, but it's just a little bit fiddly. But I find that if you use a turning tool, you can pop the tube inside it just about fits for the medium sized tube and then using the stick push it right sides out but if you don't have a turning tube then just push it you can use something blunt to push it right sides out I'm using the turning tool here the stick to just make sure the seams are laying right on the edge roll them between your fingers and give them a good press so that horn is nice and flat once you've done that it will look like this now to give the horn a little bit of structure and detail, I'm putting a little bit of soft toy filling in. It's only a tiny amount. You could use cotton wool for this if you prefer, or some fabric scraps. It's just a little bit of stuffing that sits in the top of the horn. You need to make sure that you push enough in so it sits in the top, not the straight brown section, but the rounded darker section. It's only a little bit. It will help it to stand up straight and gives it a bit of detail. and then tack it together just to hold those raw edges closed. Now take the pocket front and fold it in half to find the centre of the top edge. You can measure this, but I prefer to just fold it in half and then make a little mark. And that is just marks the centre. Now mark a quarter of an inch to the right of this centre mark and then a quarter of an inch to the left of the centre mark. These are the placement for the horns. Take the right horn, place it right sides down on top so the left hand side of it matches up with that quarter of an inch mark and position it so quarter of an inch of the horn extends above the pocket and this makes it extra secure and will stop it being pulled out as you're using your bag. Now take the left horn and place the right hand side of that on that other quarter of an inch mark. Again, make sure it extends a quarter of an inch above the edge and pin into place. You now have half an inch between the horns and they're placed centrally. If you take time to get this positioning correct, then all the features of your giraffe will look even and sit in the centre of your pocket. Now take, again take your tape measure and mark a quarter of an inch to the right of the right horn, like here, and then measure a quarter of an inch to the left of the left horn. These are the placement marks for the ears. So take the right ear and place it with the lining sides down and again it needs to extend a quarter of an inch above the edge. Now make sure that the raw edge of that ear is running parallel to the raw edge of the top of the pocket. You'll notice that the ear is facing inwards now, crossing over the horn. Do the same with the left ear, again extending a quarter of an inch above the top and making sure that the right hand side of that ear matches up with that quarter of an inch mark and you will see by making the raw edges parallel that the ears face inwards and overlap the horns. Now tack it into place all the way along the edge 
and the giraffe features are all now added and you can move on to the next stage. Making Honey the Bee and adding the features. Take the right wing ring front and the right wing back and place them right sides facing. They're the same size so they will match up and pin them together all the way round. If you put a pin in at the bottom and then in the top of the curves of the wings and then a pin on the other side, that's enough just to hold it together. Now sew them together all the way round but leaving the bottom straight edge unstitched and then it will look like this. Now to reduce the bulk and help the wing to turn out nicely, trim the seam allowances in half so they're about an eighth of an inch wide. This just removes the bulk and the seams will lie on the edge better. Now at the point where the two sections of the wings cross in the centre, just cut out a small V so you're cutting right up to the seam allowance, seam, not actually into the seam but very close to it. Because this is the section when you turn the wing right sides out that sometimes doesn't lay flat. So if you remove that little V from there, it will help. So I've now trimmed all the seam allowances and then you just turn the wing right sides out. Just cut off any extra bits. So through the gap that you've left in the bottom, turn it right sides out and then push your fingers inside. Now you need to make sure that the seams are laying right on the edge. So if you have something blunt, like I'm using the stick for my turning tool or a rounded blunt pair of scissors, just something to lay. If you run it along the edges of the seams, they will lay on the edge. But also give it a good press at this stage and that will help it to lay really flat. Now top stitch all the way around the edge and tack across the bottom. And then the right wing will look like this. The top stitch helps you to hold it flat and also add some decoration. Make the left wing in the same way. Now take the pocket front and from the bottom corner measure and mark five inches up the right hand side. Make a mark. Now take the right wing and place it right sides down on top so that the right wing front is right sides down. Put the top edge of it level with that five inch mark and pin it into place so that the top of this wing is five inches up from the bottom corner and make sure the front section is laying right sides facing with the pocket front. Now to put the other wing, it's the same thing. Measure five inches up the left hand side. So five inches up from the corner and make a mark. And then take the left wing and again, place that right sides down on top, making sure the left wing front is right sides facing with the pocket front and that the top edge of it is level with that five inch mark. This will mean that your wings will be positioned in exactly the same place either side. And when you make your bag and the pocket, it will the wings will sit in exactly the right place. Now tack the edges of those wings to the pocket front on both sides and it will look like this. And this is and the wings will fold outwards when you've made your pocket. They can stay folded inwards for now. Now fold the top edge of the pocket. So the top straight edge, fold it in half just to find the center. You can measure this if you prefer, but I'm just going to make a little crease and draw a line. Now for the positioning for the antennae, mark three quarters of an inch to the right of the center mark and three quarters of an inch to the left of the center mark. Now cut the piece of cord you've got for your antennae in half and I've tied a little knot in the top. Now place that the first length of cord on that mark to the right, that's to the right of the centre, and make sure that the cord extends a quarter of an inch above the top of the pocket front to keep it secure and pin that into place. You may have to just pin it either side depending on how thick your cord is. I've used like a leather look cord so it's quite stiff so I need to just pin either side. If you've used string or twine or cord, you might be able to pin through it. And then pin it further down and this just will hold the antennae straight. Take the other piece of cord, and you can see I've tied a knot in the end of that, and place that on the other mark, the one that's to the left of the centre, 
And again, pin it into place, making sure it sits on the mark and that three, a quarter of an inch of it extends above the top of the pocket front. Then holding that cord nice and flat so that it's in a straight line, pin it a little bit further down. Now tack it into place across the top and then where you've pinned it below as well using the longest stitch on your machine or you can do it by hand. This will just hold it straight during assembly so that the antennae don't go wiggly and that's finished. Making the pocket. The pockets are made in the same way whichever bag you're making. Take the pocket casing front and fold both short edges over by quarter of an inch then quarter of an inch again and top stitch in place to hem. Now fold it in half with wrong sides facing, making sure the raw edges are matching and give it a press. Now take the pocket front and we need to find the centre of the top edge. You may already have this mark for when you're attaching the features, but if you don't, just fold it in half and mark with a pin the centre. Now take the pocket casing front, the one that you've already folded in half and hem the edges, and fold that in half to find the centre. Now place that right sides down on top of the pocket front, matching up those centre marks. Because it's important that the pocket casing is sewn centrally onto the pocket. Now pin it into place all the way along, so the two raw edges of the pocket casing front need to match up exactly with the raw edge of the pocket front. So starting from the centre, pin along one side and pin along the other side. You will see that the pocket front extends beyond the pocket casing. If you want to be sure it's central, you can measure it at this stage to make sure you've got the same distance either side. Now sew this into place all the way along. Once that's done, fold the seam allowances down towards the bottom of the pocket so they face towards the bottom point. And also fold under the edges of the pocket front which are outside the casing so that you've got a nice neat folded edge all the way along and give that a press to hold those in place. Make the pocket back in exactly the same way. This is the giraffe, you use the pocket casing back and the pocket back exactly the same way but obviously there are no features on this. There's the pocket casing back for the cat and the pocket casing back for the bee. Attaching the pocket front. Take the bag front and place it right sides up and now take the pocket front that you've just finished and place that right sides up in the bottom right hand corner so that the pocket is right sides up on top of the bag. Making sure the raw edges match of the bag and the pocket, pin it into place. It's important that you put it in the right hand corner because the bag back is done in a different way and they need to match up. So pin it into place, just adjusting it to make sure the raw edges match all the way along both sides. Now you also need to pin it along the top edge because we're going to sew this in a moment. So place some pins between the pocket casing and the pocket front just to hold this nice and flat. So while you're on a flat surface, you can make sure the pocket front is nice and flat. Then tack it together down the raw edges and then along the top, sew exactly along that seam as close to the seam as you can. So you're actually sewing on the pocket casing, but very close to the seam. Now the pocket is attached. You can see where I've sewn that it means the pocket casing just sits above and that section is finished. Attaching the pocket back. If you want to add a tail to your giraffe or cat, then you need to do that at this stage. To do that, fold the pocket back in half just and make a crease down the center. This is just to find the center point and mark it. Now measure two and a half inches down from the seam that joins the pocket casing back to the pocket back and mark that. This is where the tail is going to go. Now I've put an eyelet in this position. You could just snip a small hole and work some buttonhole blanket stitches around it. But putting an eyelet just is a nice feature. I also pressed a piece of interfacing to the back just to hold it secure. Take your length of cord that you're gonna use for the tail and from the front to the back, back, push the cord through. Now to make sure that the cord doesn't get pulled out, you need to pin it into place so it runs in a straight line from the hole to the side of the pocket and pin it into place. The measurements I've given in the instructions are longer than you need for this cord so that you can extend it a little bit 
and then tack it into place like I've done here, close to the edge and also a little bit further in. This will just hold it straight and that second row will be removed later. You can now trim off the end of the cord so it's level and that just stops the tail from being pulling out. Now I tied a knot in the end of my tail just to add some detail. You can put this wherever you want. I've placed the knot so it's a level with about the bottom corner. It doesn't have to be exact but I didn't want it too long or too short. Now tighten that knot, that knot pull it so it's nice and tight and then trim it off I've trimmed it about an inch away from the knot. Um, if you want to add a little bit more detail for this giraffe's tail, I've just unfrayed the ends. If you just run run your fingers through it or a small pair of scissors, that just frays it. And that adds a little bit of detail to the giraffe's tail to just make it fluffy on the ends. But that's entirely up to you. That's just a bit of detail. So that's the pocket back for the giraffe finish now. This is what I did with the cat. I've got another piece of cord. I tied a knot in the end and frayed the edges. And you can see I've tacked it in place. Now to attach the pocket back to the bag back, take the bag back and place it right sides up. Now place the pocket back. Right sides up on top, but this time, different to the front, it needs to go in the left-hand corner. This is really important or your pockets won't match up when you sew them together. So place it in the left-hand corner of the bag back and pin it into place, making sure the raw edges match up. And that those edges stay folded under. The, one, the edge of the pocket back that's just beyond the casing, make sure they stay folded under, which you've pressed earlier. Again, match up the raw edges and pin it into place. Now, to make sure that the tail stays out of the way and you don't get it caught in the seams, I'm just going to fold it in half and just pin it into place for now. It just stops it getting caught in all the bag seams later. Tack down the raw edges and then again sew on the pocket casing back just on top of or just inside the seam. So it looks like this. So the pocket back is in place. You can see I've sewn it by this casing and keep that coiled out of the way. And that's the back finished. This is what the cat will look like when you've sewn that one into place and you can see I've coiled the tail out of the way which I'm going to keep like that while I construct the bag. And then if you're making the bee, it doesn't obviously have the, the little tail so there's the pocket back attached to the back. Assembling the bag. The bag is joined together with French seams which are really easy to do, they're just done in a slightly different way. So place the bag front and the bag back wrong sides together. This is important to create the French seams. Making sure the raw edges are matching but do make sure they are wrong sides facing. Now pin them together all the way around matching up the raw edges. So start on the top of one side. Now the important thing here is that these pocket front and pocket back match up exactly. So if you put a pin through the seam where the pocket casing front meets, meets the pocket front and then turn it over to the back and make sure that pin comes through the part where the pocket casing back meets the pocket back. Then you can be sure that when you sew them together, they'll be in exactly the same place. So push the pin all the way through, hold that in place and then take another pin and pin together at this point. And then you can then remove that placement pin and you can be sure those seams match up. Now from the top to the top of there, to the top of that pocket, matching up the raw edges, pin it together. Pin it together at the bottom. So you can see now why the pockets were attached to one side of the front and the other side for the back. And now these pockets match up. So do make sure the raw edges are matching and pin it together. Again, make sure that these seams are matching. So push your pin through where the pocket front casing meets the pocket front and then through to the other side where the pocket casing back meets the pocket back. Give the pin a little tug and then those seams will match up exactly. Place another pin through both layers at this point and then remove that placement pin and then the seams will match up. Now you can pin between these marks. Obviously, if you're making the cat or the giraffe, you will be pinning through the cord or yarn that you've used for the tail as well. Now pin it together in the bottom corner and then pin all the way up the other side. Start by matching up the top edge 
and then pin it along the sides, adjusting it so that the raw edges are matching all the way down. Now once it's all pinned together, sew it together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance down the side, across the bottom and up the other side. Once that's done, you can see it's all now sewn together. Now, in order to create the French seams, we now need to trim the seam allowance because this needs to be encased. So trim it in half so that your seam allowance is now an eighth of an inch wide. So just do this slowly and carefully using a nice pair of sharp scissors. And then trim it all the way around the side, the bottom and up the other side. And then it will look like that and you'll have these little seam allowances left. Now turn the bag wrong sides out and this is how the French seam is created. Because you've trimmed the seam allowance, when we now sew this together, the seam allowance will be encased within this second seam. So a French seam is basically one seam worked, the seam allowance trimmed and then another seam worked that encases the raw edge. So roll it between your fingers. This is very important that this seam lays right on the edge and give it a really good press. Once that's done, Pin the two layers together about a half an inch away from the seam. This means that you can sew, but keep the pins in at the same time, which helps keep it together. So pin it together all the way around, making sure the corners are pushed out and always making sure the seam lays right on the edge. Because this bag needs to be stuffed into the little pocket, you have to have French seams. So sew it together all the way around using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You will have pinned it up for yours. So you can see I've finished it now. The seam allowances are all enclosed within the French seam. It also is a much stronger seam than a single seam, so that when you're putting lots of shopping or items in your bag, it will be stronger. Because the bag is going to be stuffed into the pocket, you don't want it to be lined, it will be too bulky. So these French seams are absolutely ideal for this sort of bag. And you can see they're quite simple to do. You just have to sew them twice. Now give it a press, making sure that the, raw, that the seam lays right on the edge. So give it a press all the way around and you can see the pockets match up and the main bag is finished. Making the handles. Take one of the handle pieces and remove the label and fold it in half lengthways with right sides facing and give it a press. Make sure the raw edges are matching and then pin it together all the way along the length. By pressing it first, it just makes it easier for pinning and sewing and matching up the raw edges. Now sew it together, starting at one end all the way down the, the length and finishing at the other end. Press that seam open and flat and then I've also tacked it together across one end because you need to turn it right sides out. The easiest way to do this is with a turning tube and by tacking it, it just helps. If you don't have a turning tube, then you can just turn it right sides out. There are various ways of doing this. You can attach a thread to one end, but a turning tube is the easiest way. Turn the whole thing right sides out. And then undo the tacking stitches at that end if you've used your turning tube. just to open out the end because you want both short edges to be open. Now once that's done, give this handle a nice press to remove all the creases when you were turning it right sides out and top stitch down both long edges so it looks like this and give it a nice press and trim off any of the raw, the raw edges just to make them nice and straight. Then repeat this to make the other handle in exactly the same way. Attaching the handles. Take your bag and turn the top raw edge over by a half an inch to the wrong side and then by an inch. So this adds a nice deep hem to the top of your bag. So half an inch and then an inch and then press it all into place. Now place it wrong sides up like this and measure from the side seam three inches to the right of the side seam and make a mark there. You can use a pin but a mark is easier. Take one of the handles and place it right up inside the turned over edge so the top of it matches the, 
that turned over edge and the left hand side matches that three inch mark and then pin it into place making sure you only pin through the front of the bag not all the way through now rearrange the bag so that the other side seam is on the right hand side and measure three inches to the left of the seam now take the handle run it through your fingers to make sure it stays straight and place the other end of the handle inside the turned under edge just making sure that the raw edge of the handle matches with that top fold and that the right hand side matches up with that three inch mark. This means that both ends of the handle are placed three inches in the side seams and pin it into place. Now to keep it straight just while you're sewing, hold the handle straight and just put another pin a little bit further down. It just stops the handle moving while you're sewing it into place and you'll just get a straighter handle. Then to put the other handle, this is done in exactly the same way. So take the side seam, measure three inches to the right of it and make a little mark. Take the other handle and push it up inside the fold. Make sure that raw edge sits right at the fold. Fold it over and pin it into place. Because this isn't a lined bag and you're going to be using it all the time for your shopping and carrying items, by having the handle going right up inside the fold like I've done here, it just makes it stronger and also means there will be two rows of stitching holding it in place. So to put the other end of the handle in, just like you did last time, measure three inches to the left of that side seam, run the handle through your fingers to make sure it stays straight and isn't twisted, put the other raw end right up inside so it matches there, and make sure the handle, the right hand side of that handle ma matches up with that three inch mark and pin it into place. And then pin it into place a little bit further down. This just will hold it straight. Now you can pin the rest of the folded over edge into place all the way around. You don't do this to start with, otherwise you won't be able to get the handles inside. But because you've turned it over and pressed it, it's quite easy to do. Just pin it into place because we're going to be sewing along this bottom edge in a moment. Now top stitch in place all the way around the bottom edge just about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom edge. You can see here I've sewn that into place so the bottom of the handles are now attached. You can remove those second placement pins you put in earlier just to keep the handles straight. So the handles now need to be facing upwards. So to do this, it's easier I find, you can do it right sides out or wrong sides out. I like to do it this way just so you can see. Fold the handle upwards and pin it into place. Just make sure that you're not pulling the handle too tightly because you don't want to be pulling up that hem at the top. It just needs to lay flat. You can do this on your ironing board and press it upwards first to make sure that it's not pulling or distorting that top hem and then pin it into place. It's up to you. But make sure that the handle is straight when you put these pins in. Then once you've pinned all the ends of the handles, turn the bag right sides up because we're going to be sewing from the right side this time. Now because you've put the pins in on the other side, I would actually move them now. So I would re-pin, keep that, keep that, take that pin out, re-pin it making sure it's straight and then pin it back in. And I would do that with all of them. It's much easier to sew if the pins are on the right side. Now sew it together all the way around the top. Again, about an eighth of an inch from the top. So now you've got two rows of stitching, which makes the top hem really neat. It also means that those handles are held into place with two lots of stitching. So the top of your bag is really neat with the handles neatly encased inside the top of the hem. Finishing off. Now your bag is finished, you now need to put the cord in the pocket. So put the cord that you've had got for the pocket, put a safety pin on one end. Now starting on the right hand side with the bag front uppermost. Thread the safety pin through the pocket casing front. So you're starting from the side and working down to the bottom. So the pocket casing front is wide enough for the cord but not too wide because you don't want it to be too bulky when you've turned it. Once you've pulled it all the way through the pocket casing front, 
pull it through so that the cord comes out a little bit, making sure you don't pull it all the way through. And then push your safety pin through the right hand side of the pocket casing back. This means there'll be a little loop of cord that goes from the front to the back. And again, thread the safety pin all the way through the pocket casing back. The cord is long enough so that you can pull it through without it coming all the way, but just be careful you don't pull it too hard so that you don't pull the cord all the way through. Once you've out the other side, you can see that the end of the cord now is in the same place as the start of the cord, so you can remove the safety pin. Now adjust the cord so that the short edges match up, that they're in the same place, and then thread the two ends of the cord through the hole on your spring toggle. You may need to do these one at a time, depending on what spring toggle you've got. You also may need to give them a little trim because sometimes you find one side comes out before the other side. So just do this carefully. And I find if you give them a little bit of a trim so that they're not fraying on the edges, it helps to get them all the way through. Once you've threaded them through, now lay the bag flat and just adjust it to make sure that the cord isn't too tight. Make sure there's a tiny little loop on the left-hand side and then you might have to readjust the cord by pre pushing the button on the spring toggle to make sure that the short ends are the same length. And place the toggle so it's close to the edge, because you what the aim is here is that it all lays nice and flat. Now tie the two ends of your cord in a knot. So you want the knot to be close to the bag, but you don't want the cord to be pulling it because it needs to be able to lay flat for when you're using the bag. So pull the knot nice and tight, by pulling the two ends and then pulling the, the other two ends and then that knot's nice and tight. Now you can just trim off the ends. I do it about half an inch away from the ends just so they don't come out. And now that's all finished. Your bag is now finished. So this is what it will look like when you're going shopping. When you want to fold it all away, you don't need to do any special folding. Just push the whole bag inside the pocket and then pull up the cord and you can then move the spring toggle by pressing the button so it's right on the edge and that will just hold the bag in place. So this is what the cat will look like. I'm just adjusting her little ears so you can see what she looks like with her ears sticking out above the top of the bag and there's her tail at the back. If you want to keep the cord out of the way, you can just wind it up and push it inside and you'll, it's easy to store in your bag now. If you've made the giraffe, this is what the giraffe will look like with a little tail. And if you've made the bee, this is what the bee will look like. You can see the antennae are facing upwards because I removed the tack and stitches. Your shop away bag is all finished and ready to take shopping with you.